Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing my process on how I batch or bulk create um, layered rosettes. And I'm sorry if I cough, um, I'm like the last end of a really bad cold and now it's just a cough and super annoying. So I apologize, I'll try to cut as much of that out as I possibly can. Um, so these are the rosettes that I shared with you guys in my project share video. I went ahead and packaged them up. Um, they just look so cute when they're all packaged up. I'm planning on either uh, selling these on my Etsy or um, giving them away to some family members who are crafty. I haven't decided which yet, but <clears throat> so these are the ones you guys already saw. But then, um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned in that video that I just like bulk made a whole bunch of paper rosettes in different sizes. So I had a bunch left over after those and I just um, just worked through my process and created a whole bunch more. So I'll go ahead and share them with you here. So I went ahead and I packaged these ones up as well. And these ones, you see, uh, these are some of the little miniature erasers that I got from the Target Dollar Spot that you guys, if you've seen my last um, Target Dollar Spot haul, uh, these were in there and this is how I used them so far. So there's those ones, these ones, and then these little wood pieces are from the Dollar Tree. Those, and then I have... Uh, some smaller ones but I made all of these super quickly using this um, like batch creating process that I've kind of come up with for myself which is just you know it's pretty simple but I thought I would go ahead and share it with you guys just in case you know it's something you're interested in and I'll share my process and all that stuff um, I'm going to be using Halloween papers because I am trying to get this done before Halloween. I really wanted to get a whole bunch of Halloween crafting videos and stuff done before Halloween, but um, that just, it just didn't happen um, because I was in bed sick for two weeks. So we're doing it now at the last minute because it is the 28th and this video will probably go up on the 30th, I think because I already have a, I put a video up today which was the Target one and then I have another video going tomorrow which will already be up by the time you're seeing this so this one will go up the day after. Okay so my first step in batch creating my layered rosettes is to first decide on a theme um, which I mean I made a list of myself like of my steps here so that I don't forget any don't forget to tell you guys any um, but I did not put this as step number one but it is kind of where you need to start you need to figure out your theme so for my theme I'm going with Halloween because I got a bunch of Halloween stuff still and we're gonna get this up just in time so first figure out your theme now my other uh, official step one is I check for I check my scraps once I figure out a theme I check my scraps for either papers in that theme or papers like pa papers that have patterns or colors that will go with that theme. So I have a whole bunch of off cuts and stuff uh, from my Halloween paper pads from when I made my Halloween um, traveler's notebook and when I did the packaging, uh, like the back piece of these, I had um, some chunks left over that weren't the right size. So I have all of my scraps here and I check my scraps for 12 inch lengths. They don't need to be full 12 by 12, just at least one side needs to be 12 inches long. So all of these right here, these three pieces are all 12 inches long. So those will work just fine. Uh, this is a 12 inch length also, I believe. Yeah, uh, you can use lengths that are shorter than 12 inches but you will need to make them you know the width will need to be shorter you know what I mean like the thickness when you cut them down it will need to be on the shorter end otherwise you won't have enough material to wrap around and it'll just look stretched out and it won't look as good 
um, but you can make smaller rosettes with smaller lengths. I just like to do 12 by 12 for these kind of like larger medium sized ones because it's just easier to do it that way but you can play around with the different lengths and sizes and stuff as you go and figure out what works for you but I just think that this is just really easy. You only need to measure like one direction you know what I mean? Uh, so that is step number one. Check my scraps for 12 inch lengths of paper. Step number two is um, choose full size sheets uh, that I like the colors of, but maybe not necessarily the patterns. Maybe it's not something I would use as a t like a full 12 by 12, or it's not something I would really want you to be able to see the pattern, but I still like the colors and it still goes with the theme that I'm doing. <clears throat> so this is what I have left of this paper pad. So let's kind of go through here and see if there are any papers in here that I'm not too crazy about. Mm. This one, I think I'm going to keep it as a 12 by 12 because it's kind of on the simpler side and I can use it as the backing for the packaging for some of these rosettes. This, um, these strip sheets would actually be really good if you either don't use them, you don't cut them down to use them as border strips, or it's just a little like not your style necessarily like this one is like probably the only row that I would actually end up using is are these like tags up here and then I would cut them out but the rest of this um I don't really care too much about like this one's cool but I'm like it's not super crucial that I use it or anything so I can definitely use this because the colors and the patterns and stuff, they still work with the collection, so it'll still add something. Um, I'm not really crazy about this stripe, so I'll probably use that one. And I'm also not really a fan of pages like this, where it's just all words. I'm, and they're like too close together to really cut out and stuff, so this is probably one that I would use. So the reason I'm going to try and find a full 12 by 12 sheet now is because we're trying to bulk create them. So we're trying to create a whole bunch at the same time. Now if you have a ton of 12 inch scraps and you don't want to cut into any 12 by 12 papers, I mean that's fine. It depends on how much you want to make at once. But I'm going to try and make a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and take out one of these. And I like having lots of different varying patterns so that I can, you know, make as many combinations as possible when I start stacking them together. And I'm also going to take this uh, border strip sheet. So I have my, I've got two 12 by 12 papers that I've chosen. Now this can go off to the side. Now the next step is to get all of your 12 inch lengths that you're gonna be using. I'll use this one too, might as well. And let's see, this one. And you're gonna need a scoreboard or what I did before I got a scoreboard is I took my paper trimmer and I took a little tool. This one is a Cricut tool and it just has kind of like a like a pointy but not sharp end so it fits into the groove right here where normally the cutting machine would cut and I just measure like line it up where I want the um, score mark to be and I would just run this along that groove and it would score it just fine but I have a scoreboard now so I'm gonna go ahead and use that And I'm going to open it up because I do have the larger 12 by 12 sheets. Otherwise, you don't necessarily have to. The only thing that bothers me about this scoreboard is like this centerpiece. It's like kind of weird and like pops up and stuff, but whatever. So it's going to be my 12 by my 12. They're not all 12 by 12. My 12 inch strips. I can all right. So I'm going to go ahead and use my scoreboard and I am going to score everything at the same time not necessarily at the same time like I'm not stacking papers up or anything but I'm going to do all of my scoring before I cut anything and doing 
these steps in batches like this helps to make it go by quicker. You're not having to like change things over as much. So you're saving time by doing every step in a bulk fashion. So I'm going to go ahead and score every quarter inch. I prefer doing it every quarter inch. Um, you can do it every half inch, but I like the way that every quarter inch looks better, plus it does come out thinner. So when you're doing the multiple layers, you can stack more on top of each other before it gets kind of obnoxiously thick. Like, nice and thick and chunky can be really cute, and obviously there's things that you can use them both for, but I like the options of being able to add more layers and make it look more full in that way, and not necessarily super tall, because it's like a whole half inch of paper um, but you definitely can it's personal preference I just like the way that uh, every quarter inch looks better it's a little bit thinner and that means that you have more material to wrap around when you're creating the actual rosette so once it's put together it looks a little bit more full and it's thinner so you can do more layers so up to you but I'm gonna do every quarter inch uh, and when you um, score it you want to make sure that if you have a if you have a 12 by 12 it doesn't matter which way you score it because they're both the same length but if you have a scrap that is 12 inches and one length is less than 12 inches you want to score it um what's the word parallel to the shorter edge so I'm going to do it like this because it's the shorter edge. I'm not going to be doing it along the 12 inch edge. And uh, I will explain why that's important when we get to another step. Probably the next step after this actually. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score all of my papers and then I will be right back. Okay, so after I have everything scored, I've only um, scored one paper for the sake of the demonstration, um, but if I were doing this uh, just like not for a video, I would score everything, absolutely everything before I did anything else, before I did any cutting, before I trimmed this off, before anything. And you know, you could, this is a good kind of like mindless activity to do while you've got a movie on, or you're watching TV, or you're watching YouTube, or you're listening to a podcast, like something that you can do, like busy work you can do while you're, you know, paying attention to something else. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this strip off and when you do every quarter inch on uh, like one of these papers, it's not every paper, so be careful. But this particular paper, this sometimes happens with papers from paper pads especially, is the pattern actually extends past 12 inches. So where this hole is punched, do you see how part of it is on the pattern? I don't know if it's focusing. But part of the hole is punched on the pattern. That's because this portion of the pattern at this last score line is past the 12 inch mark. So I'm actually going to cut on the last score line instead of where the pattern ends. <clears throat> That's just a little tip. Just, you know, you can measure it at 12 inches and then cut it if you're worried. But um, this one, you know, I just knew where it ended. So now after I cut the little branding strip thing off, now I'm going to cut my strips and the way I like to do this is since I'm making so many at once I like them all to be in varying sizes because when I'm putting them together and everything I'm layering them so I want to have multiple different sizes of multiple different patterns so of each pattern I want to have a couple different sizes that's my point so what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to measure this and cut it. And I usually do one inch um, and one and a half inch about you can do like one and three quarters if you want it to be really big you could do two inches just remember that wherever you're cutting it whatever um, size you're cutting it at uh, when you create the rosette it will be approximately twice that in diameter because you're going to make a you're going to fold it over and make a circle basically so it's going to double um, the width and that that'll be the diameter so if I cut a one inch strip uh, once it's a rosette, it'll be approximately two inches in diameter. Um, so sometimes I do like three quarter ones, one inch, half inch. It just depends on what size you want them to be, basically. So I'm just going to cut some random sizes. And I'm going to cut them in the opposite direction of the score marks. And I'm going to cut a strip and I'll show you the strip so that you can see why that's important. Actually, I'm going to cut it this way because that's easier. So I cut a one inch strip here. So it's 12 inches by one inch. And you can see that I cut it in the opposite direction of the score marks. So now there are short little score marks along the entire thing. And this is important because when you're folding it to create your rosette, the score lines are where you're going to fold. So you need it to be this way so that you can fold it back and forth and go down the whole line. Because otherwise you would have like three score marks here and that would do no good folding it like hot dog ways. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these down to a couple more lengths. Let's do a little short one. Longer one. Like I said, I do them completely random, so it's so that I've got all different kinds of sizes. So I've got, I think one of these is like three quarter, a couple of them are three quarter inch, two of them are one inch, and then one of them is like one and a quarter inch and one's one and a half inch. So I'm happy with those. So. I'm saying so a lot. I apologize. But once, after you uh, score everything, then you're going to cut everything. So cut all of your papers at once. If I had scored uh, these papers, then I would be cutting those now at the same time. After you have everything cut down, then, which the cutting part is super fast, probably the fastest part, um, but then you're going to go ahead and take all of your strips and you're going to fold all of them and you're going to accordion fold them. So what that means is you're going to take it and on the score marks you're going to fold in and then back and then in and then back. And you're just going to keep going like that. And it's okay if it starts to like get a little like sideways and wonky. Just do a whole bunch of it or some of it and then squish it together. You squish it and then you can kind of like wiggle it around. And then on these smaller ones I kind of like to pinch it in my fingers and then just keep going back and forth. and pinching as I go to kind of tighten it up and then you just do that you sit there with a movie on or watching some TV or something and this is probably the part that takes the longest is doing all of the accordion folding but it's 100% necessary if you don't have a rosette die so I do not have a rosette die I don't have a die cutting machine so this is what I do and then I would just go ahead and do all of those. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to put these aside and I will do them later. And I will just finish this one that I'm doing right here.
Okay, so it's all folded, and now I'm just kind of pinching it together to tighten it as much as I can, and then I'm pinching it this way too to try and get it as straight as possible and as even as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really does not matter if it's perfect. So now you just have this little accordion piece, and if you were doing bulk ones, then you would just have a whole bunch of these weird little wiggly accordion worms laying all over the place. <coughs> Excuse me. So after you have all your little worms, I need to go ahead and get my punch. After you have all of your little accordion pieces folded, then you're going to need some circle punches. Now the size of the circle punch is going to depend on the size of the rosette that you're doing. You could just do all of them one inch circles. If you're doing a really big rosette, you might want to do a one and a half inch. I'm probably just going to do all one inch. It's going to hold the big ones together the same either way. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a, you know, scrap piece of paper. I guess this one. And this can't, the paper that you use to punch these circles out um, can be coordinating paper it could just be white paper craft paper solid colored paper it could be a paper that doesn't match at all if you plan on it being completely covered anyway um so i usually just use a scrap piece of paper i just happen to have scraps here that match so i'm going to use these and you're going to be punching these circles i should probably tell you what the circles are for you're going to be punching circles Let me punch one out so i can show you going to be punching them out because uh, once you have your rosette connected on the ends, you're going. this is going to be your base for your rosette. So you're going to be pushing it down onto this and that's what's going to hold it in the uh, rosette shape. So like this. This is what's going to hold it on either side of the rosette. Just a little circle of paper. On the smaller ones, you might, for for the top at least, you might want to use a coordinating paper. Um, that way, um, it doesn't really matter if it shows. It'll still match. But that is what these circles are for. So you're going to need two for each rosette. <coughs> if you don't know exactly how many rosettes you're making, just punch a whole bunch. So I have my two little circles prepped. After you have all of your circles prepped, or a whole bunch of them if you're not counting, then you're going to go ahead and get your hot glue gun. Make sure it's hot. So while I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, this is um, a good opportunity to, to tell you. And you can um, chop this off when you are um, cutting down all your strips and everything. You can do this step at that point, or you can do it now if you forget. But when you connect the ends because basically what you're going to do is you're going to glue them together when you use a 12 inch strip and you do it at a quarter inch you're going to end up with two ends that are pretty much the same but like mirroring each other you don't want that you want one end to be pointing up and one to be pointing down so i'm actually going to cut one of these quarter inch sections off just one so I cut one of the quarter inch sections off so now you can see when you're looking at the ends you have one pointing up and one pointing down and this is perfect because they're going to nest together they're gonna nest in with each other when you glue them you see okay hopefully that makes sense I think my glue gun is warm enough now I got this um gorilla hot glue gun and I'm really liking it that's really good I like it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one end and I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue you don't need too much just a little bit of hot glue right there and then I'm going to take this piece and I'm gonna put it right over it and I'm gonna just nest them together And kind of squish it so that it's getting in there okay 
So now I have this all done. So now, and I would, um, at this point, I do it one by one now. Um, because it's all, it's all hot gluing process. So I kind of stretch it out a little bit and then I push it down so that it's flat and then you push it in together. Now the pushing down part can take a little bit of practice but it really is super easy, um, especially if you stretch it out a little bit first. It's a lot easier to kind of, I just take the, my fingers on the top and I just push down. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to rip it but Doing that before you try and stick it on the circle kind of like, give, it kind of helps the, um, like train the paper a little bit, I guess you could say. So now I'm going to take one of my circles and at this point you can do, decide which side you want to show, the, the side you don't want to show, put glue on it. You don't need too much, that's enough. Now I put this over it with the circle in the center and I push and pinch in and then you just kind of hold it by pushing in like pinching it in and I push down on the center at the same time and you just hold that until you think the hot glue is dry enough usually about 15 to 30 seconds and then you take the other piece put glue on the side you don't want to show and then you put it on the top And then I kind of wiggle them around so that um, there's not like a bump on one side and it's kind of even. I don't know if that makes sense. When you try it, you'll see. But there, now you have a little rosette. And the backing center is not always going to be centered. Like mine are almost never actually centered, but the ones on the back really don't matter if they're centered. You can always cover that up with another piece of paper. Um, but it, it's whether it's centered or not, it's going to hold the rosette in place, and that's the point of it. So the top one is a lot easier to get centered because you can see it when you're putting it on. But yeah, so then I would do these individually at this point. So I would end up with a whole bunch of little rosettes in different sizes. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of the ones I already have made. And now we can get into the layering portion. So what I would do now is I would kind of sort of separate them into sizes. So I have all of my, like, I think at this point these are like one and a half inch wide. Yeah, these are, I think, maybe just a little bit over one and a half inch because I think I made them a quarter inch or three quarter inch when I cut them. And then uh, all of my like two inch rosettes, these are all my two inch ones. And then I have this one, which is I think a three inch. Um, so this is about how big the three inch will come out. If you cut your strip an inch and a half, it'll come out that size. If you cut it an inch, it'll come out about this size, which is two inches in diameter. So now I kind of separate them into sizes so I can start my layering process. And I sometimes will do like smaller ones. It just has like another small one on top. Or I don't have any like, I would call these sm extra small, small. And then sometimes I have one that's like an in-between size of this. That would be like medium. And then I would call this one a large. But I don't have any medium ones. So this is a good opportunity to um, put another layer in between these. You can keep it like this, but this is a good opportunity to put another layer. So if you just want paper rosettes, then you would just like be stacking at this point and then you can glue them together and do whatever you want. But I like mine to be multi-dimensional, like more than just stacking on top of each other. I like them to have different textures and stuff. So once I have all of my paper rosettes done, then I move on to crepe paper rosettes. <clears throat> now you can do whatever color of crepe paper you want that matches the theme you're doing. I'm going to do orange and this is like a pretty like bright pumpkin-y orange. It doesn't actually, I mean the orange in the collection that I'm using is, is a darker kind of more vintage-y orange. So this bright orange doesn't necessarily match the collection that I'm doing. But 
it is the color that I used on all of these rosettes, which I think it, it kind of helps break up the vintagey feel and add a little bit more. So it's like more like a modern vintage, if that makes any sense at all. But um, you can unplug your hot glue gun at this point. You don't have to. I'm probably just going to leave mine plugged in uh, while I create some of these. I just need to get my stapler. I am sorry. I'm a hot mess right now, and I also have to go get my son from school in a few minutes. So hopefully I'll have another chance to finish this. But So I have my tiny attacher here. Usually with my rosettes, because you don't see the staples, I just use a regular stapler. But for some reason, somehow, I'm out of staples for my regular stapler. So this will work. I don't like to use the staples on this unless I'm going to see them because these staples are expensive. So I'm gonna make two different sizes of crepe paper rosettes. I'll show you how I make each of them, but um, they are really easy. They just take a little bit of practice uh, and mine don't come out perfect. And honestly, I don't care if they come out perfect. Um, as long as they look like a circle, then I'm fine. You, they don't even have to be a perfect circle. As long as they're circular and not ovular, ovular oval shaped I don't know as long as they're circle ish I'm fine so what I do is I take this I put pinch the center and I don't cut off a length because it's not always the exact same length um so when I'm doing my full size ones which will come out to about this size about three inches because I think this is an inch and a half um it'll come out to be about three inches it's not always the exact same size every time um, it can vary slightly, but what I do is I just unravel a bunch of it, pinch the center, and then I pinch this side, and I kind of fold it over, and then I pinch the bottom. And now I just hold on to the bottom as I kind of just fold this over a little bit, pinch, you know what I mean? You, you see what I mean? And I kind of just do that, and I t twist it as I go so that it starts to create a circle. Sometimes the pleats are more pleated than other times. Sometimes I find that I'm not turning it fast enough. Like I'm, I'm not like making enough of a circle. So I kind of have to create a larger pleat so that I can turn it more. But this is just this is what I do. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but it's, it doesn't take long to get the hang. So you see how that's kind of like turning a little bit more straight. So now I'm going to create a larger pleat so that I can kind of turn it a little bit more. It does take practice to kind of get used to the motion of it. But once you get used to the motion of it, it you get a lot faster at it and it gets super easy. And this is another step that you can do just while, you know, sitting and watching something. I love those kinds of steps, you know? And then when I'm making it, I like to overlap about an inch from where it started. So it'll be like doubled up about an inch. And then I will go ahead and cut the crepe paper. And I kind of just get as close as I can, cut it. And now, now is a good chance to kind of, you can fluff it out a little bit more, pinch it in a little bit more, try and make it more of the shape that you want. And see, that's not perfectly, perfectly circular, but it's good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a stapler in there. And I do like to put in a couple staples because it holds it a little bit better. I did kind of miss that back there, so. There. So now there is a little crepe paper rosette, and look, it's pretty much the same size as this paper rosette. So these are the large paper, uh, crepe paper rosettes that I make, and I usually like to stack the medium paper rosettes on top of them. Um, because they don't really layer well behind this. I mean, you can't really see it well from the front, but I guess if you're creating something where you can see it from the side, then it could still be cute to layer the same size ones. But that's how I make my large crepe paper rosettes. Now I'm gonna show you how I make my 
I guess, medium ones. Now for this, I do actually cut a length because I know about how much material it's going to take. I kind of just eyeball it. I, let's see, about that much. How much is that? Like five inches. I fold over about a five inch length and then I fold it over one more time. So it's going to be about a 15 inch length, roughly. And then I cut it off. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I refold it. And this is how I'm going to make it smaller. Is I just fold it up so it's not too long and I can cut a bunch at the same time. Kind of straighten it up a little bit there. And then I cut off about a quarter inch. I just eyeball it. So about a quarter inch. And then I do the same exact process in creating my rosettes. Exactly the same way. It's a little bit harder to do it while you're trying to make sure the camera sees, but it's okay. Okay, now kind of pleated this a little weirdly, so I need to kind of manipulate it a little bit so that it will overlap and it's not so I have enough material and you can kind of like fan them out a little bit you know what I mean so this isn't perfect I've definitely created better ones it's a little hard to do on camera but you get the gist so now I'm just going to staple it you know staple to your heart's desire really Definitely a lot easier to do off camera because this one came out really wonky. But now you have a smaller one and it'll layer great on top of the three inch or underneath the kind of smaller ones. So now I would just start layering and at this point you can decide if you want other materials in your layers like tool or anything like that. Um, for, the, for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna put any of that, but you guys can see on some of the rosettes that I shared that there is tool in there. And then you literally, so I would just, when I'm bulk doing this, I would bulk, like batch create a bunch of these at the same time in the two different sizes. And I find the two different, just having two different sizes of the crepe paper rosettes works just fine for me. Um, so, I don't mind only doing those two sizes, but you can do smaller ones too if you want. Um, but this works for me. So I would have a whole bunch of crepe paper rosettes here and then I would just start like, I would start stacking them. I would do paper rosette, crepe paper rosette, paper rosette, and then, or I would do crepe paper rosette, paper rosette, paper rosette, or you know, just all kinds of different possibilities. And then before I glue them, I would just have a whole bunch stacked like this without being glued. And then before I glue them, I would decide, do I want to put tool? Do I want to put thread? What other layers do I want to put in between these? If the answer is none, then I start gluing. Come on, you can do it. And pop that right in the center. some glue right here pop that in the center super fast and then it once you have all these stacks you just glue all the stacks and then you got a bunch of these and then all you need to do now is so on on all of mine so that the center wasn't showing because originally when I made these, I was just using scrap paper for the centers. I wasn't caring about what the pattern was. So I just took my one and a half inch circle punch. I took some craft colored paper and I cut a bunch of one and a half inch circles and I just stuck them on top of here 
so that they can kind of be a solid background for my embellishments. <clears throat> so I'm not going to do that for this one I'm because I don't have uh, any craft paper next to me. I'm just, oop. I am just going to go ahead, and, let's see, I'm going to punch a one and a half inch punch out of here. And then, yeah, I'm going to use the pattern side because why not? It goes with the collection. So, just put some hot glue on there, pop it right in the center. And I would do all of these at the same time too, all of these center circles if you're doing them. And so I just like doing it like one step at a time. It's easy for my brain. <clears throat> and then the next thing I would do is I would get out a whole bunch of different embellishments. Like that. Got these that I used. And then I've got some of these. I've grabbed just these like randomly. But I kind of want to use one of these roaches. I think they look really cool. So this is kind of a more plain one. If you want it to be more detailed and everything like that, you can definitely put more materials. But um, sometimes having, you know, more plain ones is nice, depending on what project you're doing. So I'm just going to put a bunch of hot glue inside this little critter's body. I'm just going to stick him down. And his body is kind of concave, so I'm going to... Hold it down a little bit there. Probably didn't need to put that much glue because some of it squirted out the side, but that's really not a big deal. It dries clear, so whatever. But yeah, now I've got a little rosette with a roach in it. Super cute. And I would just do um, all the embellishments at the same time, too. I hope that this video isn't, like, too much of a mess. I'm really trying to explain as best I can, but... Yeah. So there, that's it. That's how I batch create my layered rosettes. I hope this video um, was interesting to you. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if uh, you have a similar process because like I said, it's pretty basic, but I thought maybe if somebody hadn't thought of it, it might be helpful. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> it was a little crazy, but uh, yeah, I hope it helped. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys later. I hope you have a great day. Toodaloo.